Check it out. There's a blimp right there flying over St. Louis. I just thought that was kind of cool. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the vlog. Today's vlog is going to involve flying. However, it's going to be about one theme and one theme only, and that is range. So if you're new to, F to the FPV um, hobby, range is how far you can go before your quadcopter stops receiving a signal from your transmitter and you have a fail save. So obviously you want the, at least in this hobby, you want the longest range possible. And the reason is, is because when your quadcopter goes out of range of your radio, you will have a fail safe. And the type of drones that that FPV pilots fly, uh, which are like acrobatic race drones, they have no return to home. They have no like stop, turn around, fly back to you, the pilot. Instead, they just go, you know, and that was my funny bone. Anyway, but they just fall out of the sky. So let's go ahead and establish how this test is going to go down. So this is going to be about FR Sky versus Spectrum. Let's start with this guy. This is the FR Sky Tyrannus QXF. This radio costs hundred bucks. The only things that I have modified on this radio are the gimbals. These are the M7 Hall sensor gimbals from FR Sky. That is the only modification in this radio. I have done nothing to modify the antenna or anything. So the antenna, the RF module in here, it's all completely stock. This, on the other hand, is the Spectrum DXE. I actually got this thing used on my first, like for my first quad. I flew this, flew with this radio for about eight months or so. Now, this radio costs $60. So there is a $40 difference between these two. Now, before you go to the comments and say like, what are you doing, Ryan? This, or, this is a, this is not a fair test. This is actually a computer radio. And when I say computer in quotes, I mean you can buy a set of cables that lets your phone hook up to this radio because there's a little three pin kind of servo module in the back here. There's a cord, plugs into the audio jack on your phone and you can program this thing kind of like this. However, I have that cable. It is extremely finicky. And if the software version on your phone does not match the software version on this thing, you have to update the transmitter. And the only way to do that is via computer in which you have to buy another cable, which is a three pin to a USB cable that you plug into your computer and you can update it. I don't have that cable. That cable costs 16 bucks. The cable that lets you interface this to your phone is 13. So together, that's about 30 bucks in cables combined with the $60 of this. You're at now $90, which is 10 bucks less than this guy. Stop. So price range is pretty much about the same. So I feel like because these two are in a very similar price ranges and there's only a ten dollar difference by the time you add everything up excluding the gimbals obviously i'm not including that in the cautious because that has nothing to do with increasing the range on this radio i feel like they're pretty comparable and this is what i have access to so on the other end i have two quads as you can see these are two impulse rc reverbs this has a fr sky x4r sb receiver and this one has the spectrum dsmx race receiver just the stock one not the one with telemetry both receivers in these aircraft are the exact same price 25 bucks so again same kind of thing same price range should be the same performance i feel like they're comparable so as we've established we have two competing manufacturers budget transmitters right around the same price once you add everything up two aircraft with the exact same uh, receiver antenna orientation, the exact same video transmitting antenna orientation, exact same video transmitters outputting at the exact same milliwattage. Now we just need a place to test it. So we're gonna go to the testing grounds because that is a very perfect world test environment. And then we are going to go to a parking garage, which is a very not so perfect world testing environment. And my batteries are done. So let's get this test underway. All right, so I'm here now at the testing grounds. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. We're gonna do the Spectrum Quad first, then we'll do the FR Sky Quad. 
Range test take one on the Spectrum equipped quad. Wow. All right. Test number one, complete. What I did to determine how far it, it went is, is I went into Google Maps on my phone, dropped a pin where um, the quad landed, and then I just dropped a pin where I uh, started from, which was this spot right here. So I'll show the distance on the screen now. So now I'm gonna, uh, get the FR Sky Quad set up and we're going to do the same thing. All right, this is fail safe test number two, this time with the FR Sky uh, system. Uh, oh my gosh, okay. Look where it fail safe. This is the road on the other side of Central Fields. Oh gosh. Now I'm on top of a uh, small parking garage. I'm going to start from the top, topmost level and see how far down I can go before I fail safe. I've got the Spectrum or the Spectrum radio and quad here, so we're gonna test that first. All right, Spectrum quad, test one. Yeah, that was most definitely a fail safe. All right, guys. So let's have a little heart to heart here. So that test was a bit lackluster in my opinion. However, when I went to pick this thing up from my car, I noticed it was still on. So this thing was, had been sitting on for the past like 20 minutes. So I was afraid that that might be skewing the results a little bit. So I went ahead and took four of the nickel metal hydride batteries out of the uh, Tyrannus stuck them in here it's just because you know i want this test i want these tests to be fair and i didn't think you know doing a range test after this thing had just been sitting on for the past 20 minutes was very fair so we're going to redo the spectrum test all right spectrum test take two
Yeah, okay. Okay, that was so a fail safe. We're back, only this time now I've got the FR Sky Tyrannus and the FR Sky Quad. So let the FR Sky test commence. All right, here we go. Uh, FR Sky uh, QX7 test. So I kept getting um, RF signal low warnings from the Tyrannus and just the video feed that I was getting was just absolute crap. So I think I felt it fail safe, but it, I never got like a telemetry loss or I never like kind of lost full control of it. I don't know, May, I, maybe the GoPro footage will show the propellers stop, but I don't know, it just didn't feel safe to fly. So I was like, you know what, kill it. And uh, just, I'll go retrieve it. If this parking lot was deeper, like if it had maybe like another floor to it, then I probably would have fail safe. So in both instances, the QX7 absolutely crushed the DXE. Now, I don't know, maybe Spectrum users, you might be able to get a little bit more, some more range if you used a higher quality radio. If you're getting into FPV drones, I think FR Sky is the way to go. I think Spectrum has its place in the whole radio control market as a whole, because when it comes to planes, I think Spectrum would beat FR Sky, not necessarily in terms of range, but just in terms of simplicity there's so many like bind and fly planes out there and pretty much all of them use spectrum very few of them use fr sky and most of the information that i've seen online about fr sky is stuff related to these guys so if you have a spectrum radio like a higher a more higher quality one than this and you have a lot of planes and you wanna get into quads, then it may be advantageous to use Spectrum for a time. However, if you want to get into FPV drones from a dead start, dead start meaning you have nothing and you want the best radio you can possibly buy for the money, Tyrannus QX7 with the X4R SB receiver. That's $124. It will give you proven, reliable range. That's where I'm going to end the video. Sorry if this was a bit long. There's a lot of information to cover. I hope this was informative and or entertaining. And I just want to say one more thing. If you have a Spectrum radio and you, and you love your Spectrum radio, don't let me or anybody else out there tell you that you have to switch to FR Sky to have fun or be successful in this hobby. I'm just doing this test for just myself because I wanted to see, you know, which one gave me better range out of radios of a similar or in a similar price bracket. 
but also I just want to help people who are getting started in this hobby make an informed decision. That's all I want to do with this video. So again, not trying to bash anybody, but from this test, if you want the best range performance, this plus X4 RSV. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.